Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Atlantic Bushcraft Adventures. Tonight, we are on, what are we on? Episode 74, and we want to talk a little bit about sun protection. Uh, so not just sunscreen, but actual sun protection. And my opinion, Ben, maybe you can shine some light on this too, it's a very easily overlooked essential when you're out in the woods. Yeah, it's definitely easy, easily overlooked early on. Later on, it becomes much harder to overlook it, but sometimes then it's too late. Um, so I think we're all guilty of the, I'm only going to be out there for a few hours. I don't think I'm going to burn. <laughs> and next thing you know, you have a sunburn or such. And uh, then, you know, if you're going for a long trip, which is the type of stuff we're talking about here. On the very first day, if you get a burn, it's going to make the rest of your trip pretty miserable. And then the treating and protecting yourself after that gets infinitely harder. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely something worth talking about. And honestly, like with the, the high temperature and stuff we're hit, hitting now in the sun, it's very tempting to go out there without much protection on, um, not wearing the, you know, the long sleeve shirts and stuff. And, and you're exposing more and more skin uh, and risks. Also, we're going to talk a bit about eye protection, sunglasses and stuff. Uh, and, and, and different ways you can protect yourself from the sun um, because, you know, everyone seems to really want to concentrate on extreme weathers, but really a bright sunny day is a type of extreme weather in my opinion. Oh, for sure. I mean, we talked about it before, but heat stroke, uh, heat exhaustion, those are very real conditions that can happen in heat as well as a bad sunburn. And I mean, a bad sunburn can really upset your whole outing if it's not taken care of in some some form of timely manner. And instead of taking care of it, uh, the best idea is just to try and prevent it. We've said this on last episode. What was it? An ounce of prevention's worth a pound of cure? Yeah. Yes, for sure. Uh, 100%. And we, we do have to kind of think that a lot of the activities we, we, we like to participate in in the outdoors actually put put us at a, a very much elevated risk we're, we're often very busy we're moving around we're hot we're sweaty we'll take our clothes you know our, our jackets or shirts are off we're exposing arms legs shorts and stuff um and as such you know you're not really paying attention and it, the next thing you know you look down and your legs are red your arms are red we're out on boats. Uh, I spend a lot of time kayaking and canoeing and stuff. And you really get hit with the sun twice there. You get hit from the sun beating down and basically no shade because you're out in open water. And you get it reflecting up at you from the water. Um, I'm not sure how much you get that way, but it definitely increases the the amount of burn you get for the time you're out there. Uh, I, I definitely notice that when I'm out on the water, I get tanned a lot quicker. Uh, I don't tend to burn much but you know skin cancer i don't think really cares no, if you burn or tanned, tanned a lot it's it's the damage you're receiving from all those uv rays and it's really important to protect yourself from that um the first thing we think about is of course your your suntan lotions i mean i'm sure you have some this is the spray on one you have the cream one i think we both yeah, have copper um, tone. uh mine's the equate knockoff brand of yeah. copper tone but we have some of the spray one too. The only reason I go with the cream is I find I can apply it a little better. And that's just a personal preference to me. Like when I'm putting it on myself or a Lily, uh, I just find I get a little better coverage with the cream. Yeah. So. The, the uh, wife doesn't like the greasy feeling on her hands. So I think she likes the spray because she feels. Like... <laughs> and that's just the thing. I mean, it, it's completely personal preference. And as long as it has an FPS rating for what you need it to be, uh, I don't think there's any real wrong way to go about it i mean everybody should have a good understanding of what sunscreen is and how it works uh I, I the very simple explanation of it is it provides a filter over your skin for uv rays uh yeah and you researched this a little bit more than i did i think the uh spf 30 limits like 97 percent to uv rays am i right on that uh i'd have to pull them up again but yeah there, there's only a few degree a few percent difference as you go up past a certain amount. Um, so there is there is quite a debate of whether it's worth buying, say, like SPF 100, which I think you can get, over SPF 50. What is the real gain you're getting there? And it's it's more minimal. 
um, than the difference between, say, 30 and 50. Um, yeah, and I think yeah. one of the things that uh, kind of plays into that, that you and I were talking about just before we came on here, was uh, something that I'd seen there when I was doing a little bit of the research for this was FPS 30... Uh, does block 97 or something like yeah. that. Each yeah, 97 percent. to 30. But it's people tend to not use the appropriate amount, so they're not getting the full screen protection. Therefore, if you go to a little higher FPS, uh, even if you're not using the appropriate amount, hopefully you're still getting a good or better protection. I mean, for myself, I burn if I walk by the oven when it's off. You and I have talked about this. I mean, I burn every single time I go outside if I don't completely cover up. And I don't burn then tan and I'm good. I burn, it goes away, and then I reburn. Uh, so anybody that's in the fairer skin or freckly skin like I am, I'm sure you all know that pain. So I've done, I've gotten really good with sunscreen and some other methods that I have sitting over here that we're going to talk about for sun protection. Because like I said, if I don't, I just burn. And it's not like a little burn. I burn and peel and blister. Like I get extreme burns really easy. Yeah, so I wanted to make sure I had the right numbers here. So SPF 30 is 97%. SPF 50 is 98%. So 1% difference for those 20. And then from 50 to 100. So SPF 100 is 99%. So as you can see, as you go up through the numbers, the amount it, it, it blocks goes down. But it does allow, as, as on that chart, did we have the chart up? I think you did. Uh, yeah, I can pull the chart up here for you. Um, it just, like I said, with fair skin people, if you're planning on being out there for three hours, which isn't a hell of a lot of time, it says 50 or above for, you know, for darker, rarely burned skin, you could get away with the SPF 15. Uh, I personally, I think I wouldn't go with much less than 30. Really the price is about the same. Why not go for the extra protection? Uh, I think 30s with the minimum I buy. We buy a lot of 50s and 60s, I think, um, are the numbers we hit a lot. Um, but, yeah, and that's uh, much like us here. Uh, Melissa buys that FPS 15 because she rarely burns, uh, and she likes to tan and that. But Lily and I, were like FPS 50, 60, 100% of the time. And Lily doesn't yeah. burn. Uh, well, she hasn't burnt yet, I should say, because we keep her good and... Uh, slathered up in sunscreen but she tends to have skin a lot like her mother and less like me thank god uh and she, but i mean it still works good why would you not take the extra protection like you said yeah yeah um exactly um especially in a condition where you could be out for two or three days uh and not knowing when you're going to be able to get back and, and and deal with it i mean if you do burn you know you definitely want to keep it covered up you want to to allow it to heal you don't want to continue that burn so now you know if you're going out for a hot few days i was out the other weekend i did start to burn a little bit early on this was two or three weekends ago and then for the next two or three days i kept a long shirt on for most of the time i tried to keep myself covered so i didn't perpetuate that burn that basically makes you miserable uh in really hot days uh, so if you can prevent that and be able to shed those extra layers of clothing when it is really hot, it's better. Uh, so getting ahead of the game, taking that ounce of prevention is worth the pound of pain, in my opinion. Um, which kind of brings up, I guess, because we I mentioned, you know, wearing that the, the long clothes. I mean, there are clothes with specific SPF protection. I think you... you yep. I do have example. one here. Uh, this is one that I use... When I'm teaching the motorcycle courses, that that's why it's fluorescent green. But you know what? I've actually really fallen in love with these things. I just got them a couple weeks ago. Uh, I've had the chance to test them on two motorcycle courses. And you have to remember, during the motorcycle courses, when it's like this really humid weather, it's like 36 degrees, almost 40 with the Humidex, we've taken temperatures three feet off the pavement uh, yeah. because that's about where the students sit. That's the majority of their body. And we've hit as high as like 54 degrees Celsius. So, I mean, Crazy. it is cooking you literally. Uh, and with me where I burn easy, this, this was the next logical step for me because, uh, as you seen with the, the picture we put up there, even with sunscreens, if you're not applying it every two hours or more, like I find, I almost have to apply it hourly. 
um, yeah. then the protection wears off. So these things here, they're almost paper thin. Um, I still say relatively cool. I mean, I might be a tiny bit warmer than if I was wearing a t-shirt, but I have have not burnt yet with one on. And my normal shirts that I wear for uh, the motorcycle courses, they're, they're green just like that, but they're kind of that mesh material. I've worn those and burnt through them. Yeah. So, I mean, my option was to wear my T-shirt, a ton of ton screen, and an undershirt, or this paper-thin little sun shirt, and this thing works great. So I wear that in conjunction with pants, uh, a nice wide-brim hat, which we'll talk about later. And, I mean, it's actually worked really well for me. You can, I just did one this weekend. You can see a tiny burn right there under my eyes and nose. And that's, uh, I think, much like you were saying, the reflection of the water coming back up on you, I think I'm catching a little bit of UV reflecting off some of the stuff and hitting my glasses mm -hmm. and concentrating right there under my eyes. So I have to make a conscious effort to try and protect that a little bit more because... The glasses that, once again, we'll talk about later, are a reflective surface, and they can reflect some UV light. So, yes, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I agree 100%. Uh, I noticed a lot of the sporting clothes you can buy now is it does have an SPF rating. I noticed a lot of my kids' swimsuits and stuff when we bought them all had an SPF rating, which was great, especially for kids and stuff. So it is it is easy, relatively easy to get, and uh, it's. It's not. It's a protection you don't need to keep reapplying. It's something that you have, you put on, and it's good. Where with the creams and stuff, uh, it is great. You can take it off. You can go swimming with a lot of these, although I, I highly recommend reapplying shortly thereafter. But it's, it is, has its purpose, its pace. It's, it's in the summer months, I keep this in my bag for sure. Not this particular can, it's almost empty, but... <laughs> I do try to keep some in. And with our search and rescue, when I do search and rescue, it's part of our, our kit list. We're supposed to have sunscreen with us. Um, so the sunscreen for sure, your clothing. Uh, you mentioned wide brim hat. I have one here uh, I picked up. Uh, so we can put them on. Look super cool for all our viewers. Really hard with headphones. <laughs> I, well, yeah. So uh, I, I wore this the other weekend. I went out. I was camping with Jeremy. He called me Ned Flanders. He made fun of me. I assume it was the hat. Uh, I don't know. Um, but honestly, it does. It, 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 it keeps the sun off your face, your, your head, your ears. Uh, it, it does definitely offer protection. helps keep it out of your eyes. So uh, even if you, you're wearing it, you're like, man, I'm not cool as looking as I normally am. I know, like, for me, that's a huge deal. <laughs> oh, yes. Tactical cool does have a spot in the woods, for sure. Uh, but no, uh, you know, wearing a, wearing a hat like that, protecting yourself, uh, this this particular one, I think I mentioned to you a little while ago, it's, uh, it's from Wind River, and it has this no-fly stuff on it. Mm. Uh so it, it gave me a couple of protections that protected me from the sun and helped protect me from the flies. And I did notice that there was less flies flowing around me than Jeremy over the weekend. But that just might be because it was Jeremy. <laughs> I was about to say, you can't fool those circle flies. No, no, I was saying that. <laughs> I, told that. I don't know um, if you And you want to know what? When we talk, well, we are talking about wide brim hats. If anybody's looking for a cheap uh, wide brim hat, I know the, the Glasgow Canadian Tire right now is selling them for like 10 bucks. And they got a neck guard. You do look a little dorky, but man, they offer you a great protection. I picked one up for Melissa, and she wasn't home when we started, or I would have had it in here. Um, like I said, a little dorky, but they offer great protection, and they're pretty cool. And I mean, for 10 bucks, I think, maybe 15 I can't remember, but it's not that much money. You can't beat it, honestly, because I mean, this thing here, I paid almost $100 for, this oil skin cap, just to get that kind of protection. And I mean, these things, they may not hold up as long, because that thing's almost five years old now. They might get a year, but for 15 bucks in a year, that's a pretty yeah. good thing. Like, that's a good investment. You can spend well, that much my, on a pair of sunglasses, right? Mine was about 40. It was 38 something, I think. So, I, I mean, it's supposed to wash like, wait, 40 washes or something before the the rain or the fly protectant comes out of it. So, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so, di different things you can you could use for sure. Um, like you said, you, you know, we got our UV protective clothing. We have hats and stuff we can wear. We have the sunscreens. If you have none of these available, there are still some options out there. Oh, for sure. Um, 
And one of them, I mean, it's not maybe ideal, and I don't know what le level of protection, if it's greater or less, but mud. Um, covering your skin in mud or, or back home, um, I used to go, I collected red ochre. And it was something that the natives in Newfoundland would put on. And they'd put it on their skin. And they say it helped protect them from both the flies and the sun. Uh, and it stained their skin red, but it was a physical protection. It was a it was a clay layer that went on their skin, stained their skin, and, and would would help block the sun and stuff. So things like that can be used for sure. Uh, no, I was going to say just where you're mentioning Newfoundland, uh, squid might be a little bit more prominent to be able to get in that area. Uh, the ink from squid or octopus also has about FPS 15 properties, uh, right. though you are going to turn basically black from it. Uh, but it does have, like I said, FPS 15, as well as a lot of bulk help and stuff like that. If you render it down, it will have, I think it's like FPS 10 or something like that. Um, and the, the common one floating around, uh, Aspen, do you know this one? Yeah. Well, not so much Aspen. I knew Alder would stain your skin orange. No, uh, Aspen, or as we call them, Popple or Popular, Popular, Pop, Popular, I, Popple oh. or Trembling Aspen. Um, yeah. Some people put an R in it and I can't think of how it's said. But anyway, a Popple or a Trembling Aspen, if you rub the outside of it, you know that like greenish white powder that comes off it? Yeah. Apparently that's supposed to have properties of FPS like 5 or 10. Uh, once yeah. again, it's not like great protection, like FPS 30 or something like that, but it's definitely going to give you better than nothing protection if you do get yourself in that emergency situation where you thought you were just going out for a short amount of time and maybe got turned around or you're just out longer than you thought uh, or hunting that's sometimes when i've used this trick to literally do under my eyes where you see going there uh, if i can feel that starting to tingle i'll sometimes try and find some of that and rub on my face and it does actually tend to work a little bit uh, but like i said not nothing like a commercial cream that's for sure no no, for sure. Uh, so there are some options out there for sure. Um, and I think it is important to know about them and, and, and just to keep it in your mind. Um, if, if nothing else, um, just avoid the high sun area, um, which means, you know, basically what, probably 11 to 3. Yeah, I think they say, I think they've opened that window to 10 to 4 now, just with... Uh... The extra UV coming through with ozone damage and stuff like that, they, they have opened that window from 10 to 4. But I think, honestly, uh, 11 to 3 or even, like, 12 to 3, yeah. if you can avoid, like, the direct middle of the day, sun is directly above your head, uh, that you're, that's still better than nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're out there and you're going to be out there all day, those might be times to try and stay in more shaded areas and stuff, especially... Now, we talked before about heat exhaustion and stuff. And uh, I tell you, my wife left the house, went down to the mailbox, came, came back, and the dog was kind of dragging. And it's only a few hundred feet, really, hmm. uh, coming back. But it is so hot and so humid right now. It is unreal. Uh, it doesn't take long for it to really affect you. Um, so it's something to definitely keep in mind. Um, So, yeah, wear, wear the clothing, use the cream, put the hats and stuff on, uh, keep yourself cool, uh, water, hydrate, mm -hmm. hydrate definitely helps. And uh, that's the thing, when you have a sunburn, uh, sorry not to cut you off there, Ben, mm -hmm. uh, but when you do have a sunburn, it's important to stay hydrated because it's easy to dehydrate when you have like a good full body sunburn or a lot of body sunburn, because a lot of your internal fluids and stuff go into repairing that big surface area and it's real quick to dry out. And before you know it, you have a secondary problem now of dehydration. Yeah. Well, and a, and a good sunburn will blister. Like a, not a, a bad sunburn. A bad will sunburn blister. will blister. <laughs> but, yes. Good, bad, sort of interchangeable sometimes. But if you got blisters and they're swelling out, they're filling with fluid and stuff, and it, if they get broken open, it's it's basically open wounds. It, the risks of infection go up. I mean, it goes from bad to worse to horrible really quickly if you don't if you can't treat it. And really, it's very difficult to do much about it out in the woods. So if you can prevent it, 
it's it's definitely the way to go. So being aware of that, taking the precautions before you leave, making sure you have the proper supplies, equipment, knowledge to deal with it. It's it's a huge step towards fending off and preventing these types of problems. And I think everyone has the story of the time they went out, they didn't expect to get burned and got burned. Uh, apparently for you, it's Monday. <laughs> it's basically every day, but no, I mean, and honestly, I find it's getting worse as I get older. Uh, yeah. When I was younger, I, I tanned a lot. Like I'd burn a couple times first time of the season, then I would basically tan and I'd be fine. Now, literally, I can't, like... I'm outside all the time, and that's as dark as I get from my upper arm to my lower arm there. I'm trying to get it in the camera there. And, I mean, I'm not a lot of difference in color. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. it's – I don't – like, I burn, it goes away, and I, I re-burn. But, yeah, I think we've all been in that situation, especially if you're just going out on a day hike or something like that. Uh, things get interesting. You took a little longer than you thought. Now you're burnt. Or, oh, it's an overcast day is the one I like. There's no sun out today. I don't need sunscreen. Well, UV penetrates right through clouds. Like, clouds doesn't slow down yeah. UV light. No, uh, no, it's no. Just as easy. It's actually more easy to get burnt on a overcast day simply for that reason. You tend to get a little sloppy. You're putting on the sunscreen. You're not worried about it. I'm guilty of that, too. I'm like, ah, it's so overcast. I'll be fine for a few minutes. And I come back and I'm burnt. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's never a few minutes. That's the problem is... You think it's a few minutes, but it turns out that you're different. Yeah. And, and it doesn't take all that long. And so, you know, taking those precautions, thinking about this stuff. And this is what we're, we, we really preach all the time, thinking about the problem and preparing for it and dealing with it. It's when you have that kind of in your head, you'll tend to avoid the problem a lot quicker. You'll be aware of it. So you'll, you'll take the steps, you'll, You'll move to the shade. You'll stay out of direct sunlight more. Um, these are just the easy, simple things. Um, it's the time, really, to set up that nice tarp. Practice setting up a nice tarp and get in there. And, and, yeah. And get in the shade, right? In the shade, um, yeah. One thing we mentioned that we didn't really go over a whole lot was sunglasses. And I know you want to talk a little bit about these, and I want to talk a little bit about these. Uh, yeah, anyone finds my sunglasses, they're, they're in Dover Hill somewhere. <laughs> please I return to Ben, uh, care of Atlantic Bushcraft Adventures. But no, sunglasses are an extremely important part of my kit when I go into the woods. One, not only to protect my eyes, because, I mean, during the, the summer, you'll get this, like, you can see my lamp reflecting over there onto my eyes and how much is going there. But not only in the summer, in the winter, if it's a sunny day, uh, this will help you from, like... Even snow a mild blind. case of snow blindness. And I have had that before, and it's not a fun feeling. It's a lot like a welding flash or a mild wild yeah. welding flash, if there is such a thing. It just irritates the snot of your eyes for uh, like a couple hours up to a couple days. And it's not a fun uh, experience. So ever since that happened, I, I literally wear sunglasses almost all the time. And these ones specifically uh, have a CSA rating. So they are safety glasses as well. And for me, I, it's it's even the eye protection of just going through the trees and you don't get something in your eyes. You know what I mean? So they kind of work multiple uses and there's not a reason really not to have it. They don't take up a lot of weight uh, or practically no weight. Cause I think those things are only a couple grams in weight. Um, yeah. And I buy mine at Prince's auto for, I think like six bucks a pair. So if I break them or lose them, it's no big deal. Yeah. So, um, and for me, uh, it's headaches. Uh, if I go out without sunglasses in the sun for for any length of time, especially when it's really bright days, I tend to get bad headaches. Uh, I don't get headaches very often. I tend to. I think I know what cause cause for it. I definitely, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'm like someone who gets migraines. And I feel for those people because I, I can only imagine what it's like. But I can feel it with just not wearing my sunglasses for a few hours on a bright day. I'll tend to have a headache for the rest of the day, and it is a miserable feeling. And it's an easy thing to prevent is to keep that sun off my eyes, keep it, you know, keep them protected. And it's, it makes everything better because when you have a headache, you're miserable. You don't want to do anything. You're definitely not going to be working on camp. You're not going to go on the hiking. You're not going to go on a fishing. You're just going to want to curl up in a dark spot and go to sleep. Or at least that's the way I, am. I, you know what? Nothing aggravates me as bad as a sunburn. Like I hate being sunburned and it's just complete irony that i burn so easy 
Like, you can ask Melissa. I whine about nothing more than getting sunburned. You know the man Where's cold? It? That's not even a problem. It's the sunburn in this house. If I get a sunburn, it is terrible. Like, I turn into a big baby. I just hate it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I do use all the sunscreens and stuff like that, because an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Um, so, yeah, I think we talked about some of the protection methods. Uh, if you're good with it, Ben... Do you want to try a couple of the after the burn uh, kind of ideas and stuff like that? Like out in the woods, you're not going to have a lot available to you. There's only a couple of things that I can think of that would help. Uh, once again, it's like the slime off bull kelp if you can find it. Uh, yeah. Usnia, or old man's beard, if you want to, you know, render that down or plantain. Apparently will all help somewhat. I think they're just kind of like a soothing agent. But other than that, I don't really know of a lot in the woods. What about yourself? Um, not, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things I could potentially suggest. That I just don't feel overly comfortable. Uh, cooling it down is important, but you want to make sure it's really clean water. So just taking water out of a lake, if you have, like, basically, because it's a burn. It, it, it's a literal burn. I mean, it fits in the same thing as if you burn yourself in fire. You can get first, second, and third degree burns essentially from the sun real bad ones blistering breaking you know that's that's a, a bad degree burn um and the solution is to try to keep it cool uh but keep it uh you, you know you can keep it moist but you don't definitely don't want to get dirty water on it so if you're in the woods now you're looking at potentially boiling water trying to cool it down and you could wet a cloth you got to keep the cloths clean uh i try to keep a little bit of aloe vera there are medical creams you can have in your kit that's mm -hmm. that's good for that I, I would suggest having some for that um and it's again it is a burn so burn creams and stuff would work um when we went i went camping la uh, last year i know my daughter burned her hand jeremy happened to have the, the burn cream there we put it on her hand and it it took a lot of the pain away it was allowed her to go much further and longer and we kept it clean kept it wrapped and that is the big thing with it is to keep it clean, keep it wrapped, keep it covered because you don't want to further damage it. So once you get burned, you know, protect it, keep it covered. You don't want to go out in the sun and have get hit again. You'll feel it too. You go out in the sun with a sunburn. Oh, it's your skin crawls. It literally feels like there's ants dancing on your skin. It is terrible. So you'll know, you'll know when you do it, you'll, you'll really regret it real quick. Um, much like yourself, I, I kind of forgot about the burn cream. I do keep a little bit in my first aid kit. I try to keep one burn dressing uh, and one little bottle of burn gel. Uh, the burn dressing is more for a severe burn if you accidentally burnt yourself on a pot or something like that around fire. And the burn gel does tend to work good. Uh, unfortunately, with sun burns, they generally affect a large area. So yes. both of those things are pretty temporary if you're trying to, say, cover your entire back. I mean, my yeah. little bottle of burn gel might do it once, twice, if you're lucky, and then you're kind of up the creek without a paddle. Uh, the burn dressing's only this big, so it ain't going to do much for you at all. You know what I mean? Like, no. Uh, so, yeah. No, I, I, I was out fishing with Gary uh, a couple weeks ago. So that's when I got burned. And the worst spot for me was one collarbone. Mm. The side facing Believe the right. sun, probably. Probably, yeah. I mean, my arms got a tiniest bit red, and they were – they were a little warm that night. The next morning, they had cooled down, and they were much more of a tan. Uh, and my legs were similar, a similar story. Yeah. Um, but, no, I did feel that on, on the one collarbone for quite a while. So it just happened to be the way I was fishing and stuff, and I had that one kind of open. And uh, I, mean, I, I consider myself getting away with easy, and I would have easily been able to use, like, a patch or, or a cream on that. But, yeah, if it was, like, a whole leg or your whole back, you know, that's – that's that's a large area to be covering and protecting. And it's, you know, it becomes super sensitive. So even like walking through the trees and stuff with branches and stuff, slapping and scraping it would be agonizing. It, it would make getting out of the woods an excruciating. So I'll give you a little story. It's nothing more than a little story, uh, but it fits perfect into this. When Melissa and I were still dating, uh, we had gone for a camping trip up at Indian Lake at Weaver's Mountain. Yeah. If anybody knows the area, Weaver's Mountain's about halfway from 
Antigonish and Glasgow, uh, just across from Kenzieville. Anyway, there's a lake up there. We camped there. I took the boat out. We were out on the boat. <clears throat> no sunscreen. No nothing like that, of course. And we both burnt bad. And on the way home from that camping trip, if anybody remembers when the propane truck went off the road here in, uh, I think it was Broadway, that's our fire department district. So we spent the next two days in bunker gear, crawling around on our legs that uh, have been sunburnt to snot, uh, spraying water on this truck until all the propane got pumped off. So, I mean, it was not a pleasant experience. It was probably one of the worst, most miserable experiences of my life. Uh, and I've done some real stupid stuff, so that's saying something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, like I've stitched my wrist, I've stitched my knee, I've done stuff like that. I'd do that a hundred times over from going through that again. Because it yeah. was just non-stop misery. There was no getting away with it, or, or away from it. As you started to sweat, it would go into the sunburn and it would irritate it more. As it irritated more, you try and dig it up more. As you dug it up more, you'd irritate it more. It was just this vicious cycle if you couldn't get away from it, you know what I mean? Um, and I, any other time we probably would have bowed out of it, but we were, it was such a big incident and they, we didn't really have the staff on hand. So we really just kind of knuckled down, fought through it and yeah, but you can even ask Mel about this. It was miserable. And of course I wore shorts under my bunker gear thinking that it would help. And all it did was make things worse. Right. Now the skin is like rubbing raw on the bunker. Yeah. Oh, it was just a miserable time. Yeah. You want like the, the softest silkiest thing and i use the word silk or satin something very cool and soft to put over it really um that's what i find anyways uh not so much having dealt with my own burns because i haven't burned a lot but i've definitely known a lot of people that burned i've tried to treat it i've put the you know like covered people in in that in the aloe vera creams and try to cover their their burns for a few days so that they can heal and I do know it's a miserable feeling. I do know what what you go through when you go through that. And I and it's, it's extremely important to protect yourself from this stuff. And and I don't think we can say this enough. I think we've said it a lot, but we can't say is it's vitally important, especially in the times of the year where you're you you do have more and more skin uncovered to to make sure that you've protected that skin. Come come the winter, it's still you can still get sunburned. Uh, you can also get wind burn, but it's a similar effect, but it's generally going to be your face and your hands. It's the only thing you really keep uncovered in the winter at any period of time. During the summer, you, you expose so much skin that you can, you know, you, you can burn a large, a very, very large percentage of your body. And, and it's, it's a fire it's, part. Yeah, it's not worth it at the end. If anybody wants to know why we preach about skin, like this stuff so much, if you do develop a spot, they got to cut cut it off you, and it's not fun. So, I mean, I can attest to this from experience. Um, not to get super graphic here, if you ever heard your own skin being cut off, it sounds like a zipper, and it's one of the most eerie sounds you'll ever hear in your life. And I don't know if you can see it. Uh, where's it at? No. Yeah, that's right. You can kind of see the discoloration there. That's a spot. I had cut off me and it's right beside my ear. And like I said, it sounds like a zipper. And once you hear it once, you never want to hear it again. It is just gross. Uh, it makes, well, it made me sick to my stomach because I knew what it was. You know what I mean? It's like this kind of feeling and you're just like, Bleh. it's not cool. <laughs> so if you can prevent it at all costs. Um, now, that being said, if you do get a sunburn and you manage to get home, there's a couple things that I've learned from my experience that tends to help. Uh, and feel free to add into this, Ben, from your experiences too. And you had mentioned the aloe vera. Yeah. Uh, it seems to be the golden go-to. I find with the aloe vera, you almost have to apply it every 15 minutes until it stops drying out. If you can put it on your skin and your skin gets hot and dries out again, slather it back on. If it gets hot and dries out again, slather it back on. The number one thing with aloe vera that I find with other people is they put it on once and they think it's great, which is okay. Don't get me wrong. It's better than nothing, but that's you're basically moisturizing your skin. If it's a bad burn, I have put it on like every 15 minutes for a day. Like I've gone through a one liter bottle with some of my burns. Uh, yeah. and it really does help if you keep it on that way. Now, here's something I've heard. And some people swear by it. I have not tried it myself. I'm going to mention it. 
Uh, complete disclaimer, once again, I'm just repeating what I have been told, and I've heard this from a dermatologist, as well as just multiple people. Menthol shaving cream. Have you heard this one? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually Googling it. There you go. Spell. Okay, so apparently this is a real thing, and it's supposed to be, like, the wonder cure here. So the idea is... You take menthol shaving cream, not the gel, has to be cream. Uh, can't be like the old badger brush cream either. It has to come from a can. And you put this stuff on and you leave it on your skin until it dries out and cracks. And then basically... Uh, this one here says you, you, you spray the foam on, you slather it on, you don't rub it. And then you rinse it off after 30 minutes. And then you repeat each day until the burn is healed. So apparently the menthol, like you said, pulls the heat out and the foam kind of moisturizes and it, it, it helps heal it up. But yeah, there, there was a couple of people on Facebook last year that I, I know that grew up in my hometown that swore by it and said like they came home as red as a lobster. They sprayed that on the next day. They, the burn was pretty well gone. And that's so what I've seen too. Like I have had, numerous people say oh yeah i do this all the time and they've showed me pictures of like where they were literally as red as this thumb drive and they like slip well maybe not the dark part but the white part there and they put it on and what they did was they left it on until it dried basically well it didn't dry not stick to them but it started to like crack you know how shaving yep. cream goes once it starts getting a little dried out and then like you said they just rinsed with water pat dried don't scrub dry with a towel uh and yeah, the next day they're basically like more or less gone. So it's yep. something I'm going to try if I ever need it again. Uh, so far, knock on artificial wood here. I've been pretty good this year. I've only burnt once real bad under my eyes and otherwise I've been pretty good. So I'm going to try and stay on this side of the burns. I mean, I've heard of things. I've heard of certain teas that you can like make up and cool down and, and, and put on your skin. It's supposed to help a bit. Uh, take all that with a, you know, a, a bit of a grain of salt. But these are methods that have seen to be tested and tried and people really swear by. I've used aloe vera. I know it, it offers an instant relief because of the cooling effect. I've heard if you put it in the fridge before you put it on so it's already cooler, that seems to help make it feel better. So I think that's a temporary feeling, like once it warms up. But yeah, I could see that. And for what it's worth, if you have an aloe vera plant, I have found yep. the aloe vera straight from an aloe vera plant tends to work better than the bottled yep. stuff. Now, that could be all in my head, but with my experience, it tends to work better. Don't know why. Yep. I don't have an explanation for it. But if you take the aloe vera, you split it, you scrape the stuff out. Uh, it kind of comes out like a jelly. It, it tends to stay on longer, maybe what it is. Yeah. Like it doesn't dry out as fast because you're using that jelly. Uh, that really works good for me. Unfortunately, I killed my aloe vera plant because anything I touch, if, if it grows, dies. So <laughs> uh, yeah, I do have to get allowed, another one. You haven't been allowed to touch your daughter in years, have you? No, no. We stay a safe distance apart. One one broom handle apart. And that way there's no, in, no harm there. But no, what are we? If like a plant, any kind of plant... People will be like, oh, yeah, you can throw these seeds on cement and they'll grow. Buddy, I can put them in the best ground you have around and they won't grow. So Crazy. I am not a gardener at all. Uh, Mel has a good walk on it, so I usually let her deal with the plants. Yeah. Huh. Man, I'm sweating here, just sitting here talking. It's well, crazy. that's like me. I had to close the door because the girls just got home and there's no air conditioner in here. I got the ceiling fan on, but... As you can tell, I'm starting to get pretty warm myself. So uh, I think that's about all I want to say on um, on sun protection. I mean, it, it's kind of a small subject, but a really important subject. Uh, and there's really only a couple ways that you can help it, or, or there's only a couple ways you can prevent it and help it. And I think we covered all of them that I can think of. Now, I don't see anybody in the chat tonight, so it must be a busy night for people to do other things, which is all good. But if anybody's listening to this, either on the podcast audio, uh, through all the sources that are available on podcasts, or if you're watching the YouTube video and you have a method that we haven't thought of, uh, I'd love to hear it. So post it up on our Facebook page, post it in the comments, track us down somehow, email us, podcast at atlanticbushcraft.ca. Uh, I'd be really interested in seeing what your guys' preventative measures are. Uh, what your guys' um, recovery methods are, I guess, once you have a sunburn. 
like anything like that, I'm always really interested in because I am somebody that does sunburn very easily. So if there's any yeah. suggestions out there and stuff like that, we'd love to hear it. And we'd be more than happy to share that with everybody else as well through our mediums. <laughs> I just didn't I know if you wanted to add anything in there. Sorry for that. No, I was just enjoying side. the silence here for a second. <laughs> I, I was going to see what I have. No, no. Uh, I think we really did cover this subject. Uh, it is a relatively simple subject. I think it's a, a subject that a lot of people really do understand. But it's an easy one to forget about when you're packing your gear and stuff. I mean, we're always thinking about the food, the shelter, the sleeping bag. Um, we think about things like that. We think of the big first aid kit. Well, what if I cut myself? But it's an easy one to forget. It's an easy one to just I'll, I'll be okay, but it's it's also one of the easiest to prevent, and it doesn't take a lot of effort and stuff, and sometimes a few minutes of discomfort with a longer shirt for a few hours longer than you really would have liked, or just, you know, to, to wet your clothes and just let it dry to, keep, to cool you down rather than expose that skin on a, on a really sunny day when you know you've already gotten a lot of sun might be the better method. Uh, hot dry days you're going to dry out quick anyways uh so i don't mind getting my clothing a bit wet on days like that on a cloudy miserable day you get wet it could take days to dry some of your gear out so you definitely want to be more vigilant in those situations uh when i was camping last week and we joked that if it rained it would actually have been a nice thing right yeah it was really hot and i mean we're going through another spell now where it's really hot and humid if you got wet today you'd still be wet now and you'd be into like some of the things we talked about last uh week like um you'd have some swampiness going on and some chafing for sure uh, yeah yeah I, I got us I, I will report i had none of that last weekend <laughs> proper hygiene right see it's important um so the only thing i want to tack into this is hopefully uh melissa and i are planning to try and get out sometime this weekend and if we do potentially some videos coming in the future uh we do have some products we want to test we got two sleeping bags uh and a couple other things we're going to report back on and hopefully there will be at least some interesting videos coming up on the youtube channel yeah i got some stuff at least some photos and stuff i'm going to get out there uh, a couple little short clips and videos i don't know if it's going to go into a nice video or not i did try to do a good job with it uh and i also managed to lose a good pair of sunglasses um i know and i'm the one who, you know put things away i stopped to, to to take like a closing out video we were heading it away from the campsite and stuff and and the other two guys they were wandering around and what they were doing I, I stopped paying attention to them and i sat down on the rock and i took the camera out and i trying to do an outgoing video and then they came back we were trying to figure out which way to go there's multiple ways out of here and we got i don't know three four hundred meters away or so and i realized i mean and in that train i mean i think i sent you some pictures right i mean this is rocky hilly terrain lots of valleys and cracks going back a few hundred meters takes a few minutes like it's 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 rough terrain I walked all around that hill. I couldn't find it. I eventually, I said, you know, I'm, I, these two guys are waiting under in the heat and the sun. I'm just going to head back and, and forget it. So there goes the glasses. Um, the wife will have to be mad at me. Um, just because he's not here, I blame Jeremy. It's all Jeremy. It's always Jeremy. Even, if it's not, even when he's not there, it's generally Jeremy's fault. It's definitely Jeremy's fault. If anybody's wondering who we're picking at, it's Lone Wolf 902 Be sure to check him out on his YouTube channel as well. Uh, we have a lot of fun. We poke a lot of fun at him. Uh, and it, it's all in good stride. We Jeremy's actually a really good guy. Don't misunderstand. <laughs> but it's yeah. Jeremy's fault. <laughs> it's definitely Jeremy's fault. Anyways, yeah. So, uh, like we always say, you know, get out there, try some new things. Uh, do it safe. Make sure you take the proper precautions. Let people know where you're going. All that jazz. Uh, we always say it. And uh, it's definitely not our fault if something goes wrong. It's Jeremy's fault. Remember that? <laughs> Jeremy is the bushcrafting scapegoat. You heard it here yeah. first. <laughs> At least for Atlantic bushcraft adventures. <laughs> and especially when he's not here to defend himself. I mean, that's the beauty of Quiet Nights. We can say whatever we want and nobody finds out until tomorrow. Yeah. 
But anyway, I think that's it for me on sun protection. And unless you have anything else, Ben? No, I'm good. All right. Okay. I hope everybody has a real good night. And we'll see you next week, hopefully with some new stories, new topic. And once again, if you guys have any uh, concerns, questions, comments, suggestions, let us know. We already mentioned how to get a hold of us, so please feel free to do so. Have a good night, everybody. Get out.